If you really want to end the refugee crisis, or if you want to stop the global terrorism happening all around the world, this video will address those problems by understanding what's causing it so we could all actually work together to fix these things. But what we're being told and what's really happening are two completely different things. We have people on the right criticizing Islam and Muslims, and on some points they are correct, but they are only dealing with the symptom of a larger problem here. Meanwhile, the mainstream media and the liberal left have completely become hysterical morons who are just yapping about these crazy conspiracy theories between Russia and Donald Trump. Meanwhile, if you looked at Donald Trump's foreign policy, you could see that the opposite is true. Now to make my argument here, you have to understand that the US foreign policy that was carried out under George W. Bush and Barack Obama have created more terrorists. Not only with destabilizing the Middle East, but by overthrowing their leaders, creating a vacuum of power creating sectarian violence, financing Sunni radical Islamic terrorist groups in order to overthrow undesirable leaders that wouldn't go along with U.S. foreign policy within the last two decades have created this refugee crisis and an expansion of global jihad that we're seeing the repercussions for almost every week now in the Western world, not to mention the terrorist acts committed in the Middle East every single day. Now, I could make a whole video just on that topic alone, and if you want that and don't understand this point, please let me know in the comment section below and I will do that. But moving forward, in 2016, there stood a man who was unconventional, who was different, who spoke his mind, who promised he would end those failed foreign policy objectives by the United States that have created the problems that we are all facing. He admitted Assad, Iran, and Russia were fighting ISIS and said he would join them on this fight. He laid out a non-interventionist foreign policy and even questioned the need for NATO. He promised to block all oil imports from Saudi Arabia in order to secure domestic energy independence from our foes and the oil cartels, which he openly warned people to be beware of the Saudi snake oil that fuels terrorism. giving hope for those who are studying and understanding the real foreign policy objectives of the United States in the Middle East and the problems it was creating, we finally saw a resolution, a solution, a man who would come in and change all that. A man who openly exposed how Saudi Arabia was a part of 9-11. And then, as soon as the man took power and became president of the United States, everything changed. And you would think the left and the anti-Trump movement with the mainstream media would galvanize and push against this. But it is as if they are controlled by some kind of deep state since they barely mention it. While the right pro-Trump media still cheerleads for Donald Trump, ignoring this major turning point that will create more problems for this country than we could ever imagine. On March 14th, 2017, Donald Trump met with the Saudi prince, praising him and signaling a major turning point in the relationships between the United States and Saudi Arabia. And since taking power, Donald Trump has vowed not to work with the Russians in order to defeat ISIS. He has made Iran the major one enemy for the United States, launching sanctions against the country and tough talk of even military action against them. Now the major problem here is that Donald Trump has now officially aligned himself with Sunni Muslims against the Shiite Muslims. We have to understand, ISIS declared a war on Shiite Muslims since they are predominantly a Sunni group. Saudi Arabia is predominantly a Sunni country that has been financing radical Islamic terrorists all over the world, including the ones fighting inside of Syria. They have had many proxy wars with Iran, which is mainly a Shiite country. And we have seen predominantly Sunni Saudi Arabia and predominantly Shia Iran fight for hegemony inside of the Middle East with many proxy conflicts in Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, supporting forces that, of course, embolden this fight between the two major sects of of Islam. The United States now engaged in this fight is sending hundreds of boots on the ground inside of Syria, which of course will not only prolong the conflict, but also is indicating that the United States has not given up its goal of regime change inside of Syria. As that has happened, Donald Trump has increased his offensive inside of the Middle East, causing a major collateral damage incident, which many people estimate killed nearly 300 civilians inside of Mosul just a few days ago. And as described by many war correspondents, Donald Trump's 
latest U.S. airstrikes in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen are astonishing. Civilian deaths from U.S.-led airstrikes have hit a record high under Donald Trump, with more than a thousand civilians killed by U.S.-led airstrikes under Donald Trump in the short time span that he has been president of the United States. Drone strikes have increased up to 432 percent under Donald Trump while he gave the CIA, aka the deep state, the authority in use to actually commit these assassinations and drone bombings. And with the main campaign promise of Donald Trump broken, we are seeing a barbaric and savage foreign policy being carried out, with over 7,000 airstrikes in Iraq and Syria in the past two months. And with the increase of these bombing campaigns, there will be civilian casualties, there will be collateral damage, and of course there will be blowback. And Donald Trump is only making stronger and emboldening the very enemy that he wants to defeat. And thinks he's destroying but ultimately just multiplying and making the situation worse because these events that create blowback are the number one recruitment tool for radical Islamic terrorists. Now the people on the right and the pro-Trump alternative independent media will say well we need to bomb the crap out of them, we need to destroy ISIS, we need to destroy radical Islamic terrorists, but you're forgetting the main factor is that the United States, they're going after Shia and Houthi rebels who are trying to fight the Sunnis who are mainly responsible for global jihad and are predominantly the major cause of Western terrorism. And that is exemplified exactly what's happening with the war in Yemen as the White House is now weighing even a deeper U.S. military involvement with Saudi Arabia against that country. And as the two years of bombardment from U.S., U.K., and Saudi-led aggression against that country, we are seeing a massive humanitarian crisis that, of course, surprise, 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 is totally absent from the so-called ethical, moral, caring mainstream media that really gives a damn about human life, right? Yeah. And as we're talking, U.S. and Saudi Arabian bombs are showering Yemen with air raids and cluster bombs, with Houthis being the major target of this attack, even coming out and saying, wait, I thought you guys wanted to eliminate Al-Qaeda. And how can you do that when you're working with one of its sponsors destroying us? And as that's happening, there's more saber rattling, pushing back and forth, tough talk, and open threats happening right now between the United States and Iran. And ultimately, what you're seeing here is a failed war on terror continuing that will only create more terror, more refugees, more problems for all of us, not only in the United States, but the entire world. Because ultimately, if you look at the bigger picture of things, these terror attacks mainly benefit the state, causing us to panic, causing us to fear, causing us to hate each other, dividing and conquering society so we don't really understand what's happening while we're trying to fix the symptoms of this instead of dealing with the actual problem that's causing it. And what we're seeing is a problem reaction solution dialect being carried out once again with Donald Trump with an unperpetual ending of it that will only lead to more chaos more destruction more human suffering and more power to the state if you really want to stop the refugee crisis if you want to stop the terrorism that's happening all around the world you address and deal with this problem and I have to say why am I the only one talking about this all these other YouTube journalists independent media have ultimately drank the Trump kool-aid and refuse to talk about this. Now I know, this is not going to make Trump supporters happy. This is some serious truth that you need to deal with if you really sincerely do care about solving the world's problems and not just trying to win an argument and look like you're in the right all the time. I'm not here to try to make you happy. I'm not here to espouse your views and just regurgitate them to you, even though that's the popular thing right now. Even though that's what's going to get you followers and subscribers. I'm getting flack from the left. I'm getting flack from the right. YouTube is chewing out my ass, screwing my business up. But you know what? At least I know that I have never let myself down and never let you down with telling you exactly what's happening in this world. If this video and this message resonates with you, please share it and show everyone that you are not the minority when it comes to this greater issue. And of course, this broadcast would not be possible if it wasn't for your donations, your support, you voting with your dollar, going to wearechange.org forward slash donate and contributing to keep real independent media free and beholden to you, the people. Thank you again so much for watching. That was a serious video. Stop watching. Um, I'm asking you guys to exit out and, and stop watching. I'm trying to manipulate the YouTube algorithm so my viewers who are subscribed to me would actually see it with this new YouTube bullcrap that they're pushing. I explained it in detail in yesterday's video at the end. I'm not going to do it again. But I am going to get so much crap <laughs> for this video. Oh!
Oh, man. Whew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Whew. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm going to twiddle my tongue again. Whew. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, literally, I told you to stop. You're still watching. I'm literally just going to keep going on, uh, twiddling my thumbs. There's actually people who are watching yesterday and watched, and I told you, and I went on for two minutes just sitting here twiddling my thumb, and I was like, why are you watching? I don't understand this. Someone please explain this to me. We're, stop. Exit. Click. Out. Out. Don't watch this video. At that right now. Why, like, watch it. Share it. But now, don't. We're just manipulating the YouTube algorithm. It was, I think the video is nine minutes. We're going to make it like 11 minutes. Why are you still watching? Stop it! <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, how long was that? That's enough. Thanks.